I'm going to look at three, three different cases of cars turning on roads. So in this first case, and these are all looking at the car driving out of the road uh, instead of from the top. Uh, but in this first case, it's just a flat road. Uh, the car is turning this way. So the center of the, in all cases, the center of the circle is that way. So, I mean, I guess I could draw a little picture right here. If this matched up, it would be like this. There's the car from the top. It's going that way. And the center of the, of the turn is right there. It's a circular road. So in this first one, we're going to look at what kind of frictional forces would we need? What coefficient of friction would... No, we're going to see how fast the car could go uh, around this turn without slipping. The next case... Uh, we are going to see uh, about a banked curve. And so a lot of curves are slightly banked. In NASCAR, they're severely banked. But I want to find out if it's, if it's tilted at some angle, let's just say theta equals 10 degrees. I'm going to pick 10 degrees. It's the same radius. Well, then what speed would this go so that it doesn't need any friction to make it turn? And then finally, what would happen if I have a, a vertical road how fast could I go on this and not fall down? So we're going to do these three cases. Now, there, and I'll talk about this one. This is, there's a complicated version of this one, um, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's just start with this one. And so in all of these, I, I am going to use some values. Uh, the mass of the car is 2,000 kilograms. The radius of the curve is 30 meters. Uh, the coefficient of friction between the tire and the road is 0.3. I'm just making up these things. And then theta equals 10 degrees. I'm going to need to do that. I'll put in some numbers to calculate these for you. So if I have a car moving in a circle, then I know that the net force has to be the rate of change of momentum. But for an object moving in a circle, the magnitude of that rate of change of momentum is mv squared of r. We call this circular motion. So the magnitude of the net force uh, is the magnitude of the rate of change of momentum. This means perpendicular. The, the, and the, perp, the force has to be perpendicular to the motion. That's why that perpendicular is there. So a lot of people call this centripetal force, uh, center pointing force, but mass of the object, the velocity of the object squared divided by the radius of the curve. And then the other thing that we're going to need is this model for static friction. The magnitude of a static friction force is less than or equal to some coefficient, that's that, times the magnitude of the normal force. And the frictional force is always parallel to the surface. So let's do this one. Let's draw a force diagram for this one, and we're going to see what we can find out. Okay. So here's my car. Just a box. And the center of the circle is over here. And I'm going to call this the x and the y direction. So what forces are acting on this car? Well, I have the downward gravitational force due to the interaction with the Earth. I'll call that Fg. I have the upward uh, force due to the road, Fn. Uh, and then I have a frictional force this way, F, F. And so uh, remember F net is the sum of the forces, Fn, the normal force, plus Fg, the gravitational force, plus Ff, the frictional force. And that's going to be equal to something. But here's the thing. I actually know something about the change in momentum. You know, these are forces. The frictional force and the normal force are forces that we don't really know how to calculate. But we do know something about the change in momentum. So if you know something about the change in momentum, you can find those forces. And in this case, I know that the change in momentum in the y direction is zero, and the change in momentum in the x direction is mv squared over r. So I'm actually going to break this into two pieces. I'm going to say f net, I'm going to do the y first. y, the, this is a scalar equation, is equal to zero. Because in the y direction, the change in momentum is zero, because it stays on the track. It stays on the road. So the change in momentum in the y direction has to be zero. For the x direction, f net x, this is going to be equal to, uh, I know that it's accelerating, has a change in momentum towards the center of the circle that way, so it's going to be mv squared over r. These are both scalar equations, and so that makes it a little bit easier. 
So let's write down the scalar equation for the net forces in the y direction. F net y. Well, what for? I have three forces. I need to find their components in the y direction. So how much is F in pushing in the y direction? Well, it's all in the y direction. In fact, it's all in the positive y direction. So this is going to be F in. So the magnitude of F in in the y direction is the magnitude of F in. Right, because it's in the y direction. Uh, the frictional force is pointing in the x direction. There's no part of that pointing in the y direction. So this has no component in the x in the y direction. That's the x. And then the gravitational force is in the negative y direction. So this is negative fg. And that has to be equal to zero. So I do know that the, uh, the gravitational force fg is equal to m times the vector zero negative g zero, where g is a gravitational field. So I know the y component of this is negative g. That's why I put the negative zero. Well, I'd use the magnitude. So this is going to be equal to fn minus mg. And now I can solve for fn by adding mg to both sides. And I get the normal force fn is equal to mg. That's just the magnitude of the normal force. And that may make sense, right? Because uh, the normal force is pushing up the same as weight. In this case, be very careful. There are a lot of cases where this is not true. Don't think this is always true. Now let's go to the x equation. So I'm going to say F net in the x direction is uh, what forces are in the x direction. Well, that's just in the y direction, no x component. That's just in the y direction, no x component. And this is all in the x direction. So I just get the friction force, not as a vector, it's the component in the x direction. And that's going to be equal to m v squared over r. Now, I want to solve for v, but I don't know the friction force. So if I want to know as fast as this can go, then I can say f friction equals mu s times fn. The, I want the maximum friction force I can use. Instead, it's usually less than or equal to, but I'm going to say equal to. So that means that this is going to be equal to the frictional force, which is uh, mu s times the normal force. And the normal force is mg. So this is mu s times m times g. I want to solve for v. So let's multiply both sides by r. I get m v squared equals r mu s m g. Let's divide both sides by m. And let's take the square root. So v equals the square root of r mu s g. And let's just check the units here, right? Because r has units of meters. Mu s is a coefficient, has no units. G has units of m newtons per kilogram, or also uh, meters per second squared. So meters times nothing times meters per second squared is meters squared per second squared and you take the square root, you get meters. Let's put in our numbers. Remember, uh, I don't have the mass, but I don't need that. R is 30 meters. That's what I said, right? Yeah. And mu is 0.3. So if I put that in, G is 9.8. Right there. I have a little calculator holder right there, so we can see a little bit better. That's good. Clear. So I'm going to get the square root. No, not answer. The square root. What the heck? I don't want that. Clear. Square root. Why is it doing that? Don't do that. Let's do 2 times 6. OK. Clear. The square root. That did it now. Of r mu g. So it's going to be 30 times 0.3 times 9.8, close parentheses, equals. And that's 9.39 meters per second. Cool? OK, now let's go to our banked curve. Let's do the exact same thing. I'm going to start with the free body diagram. Now, in this case, I actually am going to draw the road right there. There's my car. 
and this is the angle theta, which is 10 degrees. And then I'm going to draw my x and my y axis like that. Now, you may think, oh, hey, I did an inclined plane problem before, and we put the x-axis in the direction of the plane. Don't do that. Because um, we, want, we, if we want the change in momentum. We want one of the, the axes to be in the change in momentum direction. I still want to say uh, f net y is equal to 0, f net x equals m v squared over r. I still want to do that, and if I had this tilted this way, my change momentum is towards the center of the circle, which is this way, and it wouldn't be in the x direction. It'd be in both the x and the y directions, and that's pretty complicated. Well, let's draw our free body diagram. Remember, we're going with no friction. So I have the downward gravitational force, Fg, and then the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface is like that. Well, uh, if this is the angle theta, then that's the angle theta. So let's write down F net. F net Y is going to be a component of this force. Did I have a purple pen? I did. There it is. Purple pen. So this right there is my Y component and that's my X component. So my y component is going to be equal to the adjacent side of that triangle. So that's going to be equal to Fn times the cosine of theta. And remember, theta is just 10. And then my y component of the gravitational force is just going to be negative mg. And we have to add those together to be equal to 0. So again, I'm going to solve for, actually, no, let's not. Let's just leave that for right now. Now let's do the x equation, f net x is going to be equal to, the only force in the x direction is a component of the gravitational force, I mean the normal force. It's that opposite side right there. So I'm going to use fn sine of theta, because that's the opposite side, and that's going to be equal to mv squared over r. Now, I want to solve for v. I know r, I know theta, but I don't know fn. So we need to solve for Fn up here. So let's solve this equation for Fn. So if I add mg to both sides, I get Fn cosine theta equals mg. Fn divided by cosine theta is mg over cosine theta. Note that the normal force is not mg. I told you it wouldn't always be that way. I plug that in over here, and I get mg sine theta over cosine theta equals m v squared over r. The mass cancels. Uh, sine over cosine is tangent. You don't have to do that, but I did. And I'm going to multiply both sides by r. So I get v squared equals r g tangent theta. Take the square root. v equals the square root of r g tangent theta. And again, here we have meters. Here I have meters squared, meters per second squared. Tangent theta is a ratio. It doesn't have any units. Uh, so this is going to give me meters squared per second squared. Take the square root, I get meters per second. So let's go ahead and put our numbers in. I'm going to use theta is 10 degrees. And let's calculate this. So clear square root. Why does it do that? clear, square root, that did it again, clear, 2 times 2 equals clear, square root, no, 1 times 1, clear, 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 whatever, it's just 1, so it's going to be the square root of rg tangent theta, so uh, 30 times 9.8 times tangent Oops. Ah. 10. I think that worked. Fit. No, that's not right. <laughs> Is that right? No, that can't be right. Okay, let's try it again. Square root. I don't want that. What if I turn this off? Now I'll turn it back on. I'm doing something dumb, I'm sure, but uh, 
Let's just take, let's put the thing in there and then take the square root. That's what it wants to do. Can you do that? Let's see, square root. Okay, there it did it. R, which is 30, times 9.8, times tangent, 10. 7.2 7.2 meters per second so not as fast now I do want to point out something that happened in both this solution and the previous one did not depend on the mass so you can design a curve or design a speed limit and it doesn't matter what the mass of the car is because more massive cars take a greater net force but they also have a greater frictional force and they also have a greater normal force so it all evens out. So but this case, you can't go as fast. I mean, it's not a very tilted road, but it's great because you don't have to worry if there's ice or whatever, wet, it doesn't matter. You don't need any friction. Now, I, I will say, what if you go too fast? If you go too fast, then uh, the car uh, will need an extra frictional force pointing that way. However, if you go too slow, there's an actual frictional force going that way. And this is not a trivial problem to solve because this friction force um, is, is pushing down and to the side, and it depends on this, which is pushing you know, up and to the side. So there's two forces that can make it turn in a circle. I'll just, t I'll just tell you, it's not super simple. Okay, let's look at this one now. The wall of death, and here's my car. This one's kind of fun to draw a free body diagram for. So what forces are acting on the car? Well, I know that there's a gravitational force, and this is my x and my y direction. So I know I have, that's y. I know of the downward gravitational force, uh, Fg. I also know the direction of the normal force. The normal force is perpendicular to the surface, and the surface is vertical. So that means that the normal force, Fn, is this way. Isn't that crazy? Well, if those are my only two forces, I need some force pushing up to make the, the gravitational force to cancel that so it doesn't fall, right? So that's going to be a frictional force. I'll draw it to the side a little bit like this. F friction. So, but still, I have this. F net Y is zero. I want it to be in a stationary, stable motion around this wall of death. It's curving all the way around. And F net X is equal to M V squared over R. So let's do the Y equation first. So what forces are in the Y equation? I have the, the frictional force. And I'm going to use the maximum frictional force, but I'm just going to write it as FF. And then minus MG equals zero. So in this case, the frictional force and the gravity are acting in the Y direction. Um, and that's it. And then in the x direction, I only have the normal force. So I have Fn equals mv squared over r. And I want to solve for the velocity. So let's, um, again, find the frictional force. In this case, um, I, I want to use the same model. The frictional force is equal to mu times the normal force. So let's put that in up here and calculate the normal force. So if I do that, I get uh, mu s times the normal force minus mg equals zero. So f normal force times the coefficient is equal to mg. So the normal force is mg over the coefficient of friction. Now I can put that in up here and I get mg over the coefficient of friction, that's the whole normal force, is m v squared over r. I want to solve for r. The mass cancels. So v squared equals r g over mu s. v equals the square root of r g over mu s. And again, it's going to have units of distance times g square rooted, so it does have units of, of velocity. Let's go ahead and calculate that velocity. Uh, again, we're using a 30 meter uh, radius and 0.3 is the coefficient right here so you can see clear uh, clear 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 square root are you joking me clear 
square root. Why does it do that? Someone, someone tell me, I know someone's like, you don't know how to use a calculator. And I agree, I do not know how to use a calculator. Oh, there's two square roots, that's why. I was pushing the wrong one, I couldn't see. Okay, square root, that's better. I'm so dumb. There's two. My fault. Okay, so it's a 30 times 9.8 divided by 0.3 close parentheses equals. And I get 31.3 meters per second. That's pretty fast. Okay, let's just, I don't know if I can do my, I can't remember the conversion. Let's see, Third, one, let's do one uh, meter per second in mile per hour. Let's see if I can get that. Okay, so this would be equal to uh, 2.23 miles per hour divided by one meter per second. And so that would be equal to, calculator, uh, now I can use it, my answer, times 2.23. 69.8 miles per hour. So you gotta really go fast around this. It's a pretty big circle. Now, you could make that speed lower by decreasing the value of R. So if you want a, a wall of death, and they do make these things, uh, this should be smaller. So you don't have to go so fast. Um, but let's just think, what, what if you don't go fast enough? If you don't go fast enough, then the the normal force is going to be smaller and you're going to get a lower frictional force and then these two will not uh, add up to zero and you'll slide down. What if you go too fast? You can go as fast as you want. As you go faster and faster, this frictional force won't get any larger because that's the that was the maximum. We we're using the maximum friction force. It can be smaller than that. So if the normal force increases, that just gets smaller. Um, yeah. Now there's some other weird things for the circle of death, the wall of death. It's a real thing. Um, but... In particular, if, if you have a really small radius, then uh, you have to take into account where is the center of mass and where is the center of acceleration, but let's not talk about that. Okay, so those are your three uh, tracks, um, flat, banked, and the wall of depth.